So I thought I'd quickly show you how to install uh, and then configure X11 VNC on um, this Ubuntu machine uh, running 17.04 um, in a remote access or screen sharing configuration. So not an additional desktop, um, but this one desktop or display zero. First thing we're going to do is we're going to install uh, X11 VNC. Great, and now that that's installed, we can uh, we can quickly run it. So X11 VNC is just how you call it. I'm just gonna leave it in its default unsecure. And then if I go to um, another laptop, I can just connect to it and you'll see me connecting to it there and I can move stuff around, etc. That's great. Uh, and I'm actually gonna close my connection now and it should kill that off so now I won't be able to connect back in obviously if you're running remotely this would be a problem um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set it up as a uh, service that will start on start up and remain there in the background so let me just clear this first first thing we need to do is we need to create a uh, like a service file this is stored in a particular location which is as follows uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to sudo in and then we're going to use nano to create that file And I'm going to call my um, service file x11vnc.service. Uh, and then in here, we're going to need to put the following in. Um, you need to be quite careful about capitals. Uh, uppercase and lowercase is quite significant in this. Um, and there's quite a lot of uh, information and some misinformation online about this. Um, and what you put in here, uh, we'll have I can spell what you put in here, but this configuration is one that I've found to, to work um, and it's been quite stable. So I've, I've rebuilt this machine, so I now need to do this. Uh, and it seemed a pretty sensible idea to do it. Um, so first thing is you need a description. And we also need to do this after, because um, if it doesn't, if it's not able to see the, the display, um, it will just crash out. So you need to tell it that it needs to wait for the display. Uh, you also need to wait for um, the network to be available. And I've also found it, it helps if um, the syslog is also available. Um, and then in the service, we need to tell it uh, what kind of type of service this is going to be. And I found that forking it is the most uh, stable, it runs into least errors. We also need to tell it two other pieces of information. Exec start and exec stop, which are the two commands to start and stop. Uh, I'm going to put this basic bit in here. So the path to the file is user bin x11vnc. And then to kill it, I found that this, this command um, is working. So kill all X11 VNC. We'll come back to, to this one in a minute. And then the other one I normally put in here is uh, restart um, and tell it to restart on failure. Uh, and then last one in here is we want to do wanted by uh, multi-user target okay and that's the basics so in here this line here is the actual command that we need to uh, trigger so x11 vnc will just start it up but unfortunately the thread or the process will die whenever you disconnect for the first time so you need to tell it you want it to go forever you also need to tell it because you're not triggering it from a particular user which display you want to use so display zero which is the first one and then uh, auth guess is just something that everyone needs to put in so it's in there and the only other thing you should put in uh, obviously this is unencrypted but you should always put in a password uh, and I'm just going to put in this for now I think that is it that needs to go in this file so let's write this file out and then we'll close that and then basically you need to uh, run a few things so system control ctl daemon reload Um, you're also going to want to tell it that you want to enable that service. Uh, 
And then what we can do is we can start that service. So let's just do that quickly. And then I should just be able to VNC in, but this time it's going to ask me for my password. And I'm now remotely connected. The other thing you can do is you can also have a look at the service and see what's going on. So system CTL, uh, just by status of X11 VNC. So obviously that isn't it. You can encrypt this and get it a lot more secure or you can SSH tunnel, but that's more to do with the, the way that X11 VNC works than how to get it up and running. Cheers.